So in response to some of the comments I got on the septic video I just did, I just want to make this quick video to explain the differences in, I guess, the strengths of some of the underground utility lines that I'm often burying and what's available. So we'll start with the septic pipe. Um, in that video, I used this 4-inch Schedule 40 pipe. And some people said, well, you know, that could get damaged under the roadway and being that it wasn't filled with sand or something. Um, the reason I used the Schedule 40, here's the Schedule 40, and this is what I see a lot of people use commonly is for septics, is this stuff. Um, and I'm sure they're using it because it's a lot less money than this. But the, the difference is pretty huge. Um, this stuff, you know, I can just... This stuff, if you step on it... You no, know, look, I'm not even... And I can flatten it. This stuff here, it's, it's like a rock. So that, that's why I use this. Um, the, the amount of time you spend and money you spend trucking in sand or something to fill around this and it's still not reliable you're not saving any money at all by buying this stuff look if you're doing a septic always do like this pipe same with now the same with conduit that you use you know this is good this is for electric lines or communications like cable or phone um, Here's a piece of Schedule 40, and there's a piece of Schedule 80. Now, obviously, the Schedule 80 is more money, but look how much thicker the walls are. So, for the drop more that you'd spend, you know, always get the 80. Same thing with well lines. They rate this stuff in PSI. This is a piece of 100 PSI, and this is a piece, I think, 160 or 180. Look at the difference of the walls of the material. You're not, I've seen this stuff crack, you know, a root or a rock or something will hit it and it'll get a little split in it and it won't work. And it's frustrating. This stuff, I have not had any issues with that. Um, so always spend the drop extra money. Buy the better, stronger pipe whenever you're doing any, anything underground. Um, another good tip for the well line this stuff's cheap. Excavation's expensive. And it's inconvenient when it breaks down. Put in like two or three of these. You know, if you got your trench open, you know, don't why just run one? You know, put in another one. It, uh, don't even hook it up. It's just there as backup, especially in a shallow well or something where it's easy to get to it. Both ends. You know, if the one ever fails, you could just switch to the second one. And you, you didn't do any of that excavation. Another thing I see a lot is this SDR-35. You know, that's decent, but I've still been on quite a few jobs fixing that when it goes bad. Um, I always use this 4-inch Schedule 40. Look, look at the wall thickness between these three pieces of pipe. This stuff is a lot stronger. I mean, I, I'm going to test this. I'll drive over these with the backhoe, and you'll see that this stuff really doesn't need to be filled with sand. I guess another good tip for burying underground utilities is, you know, put, you know, get, pick up a few rolls of this tape and put this over top, you know, like a foot over whatever you're burying. Um, you know, I always do this when I'm burying something dangerous like electric or propane. Um, you know, I probably should do it for everything, but, you know, the fact that this stuff here. You know, you, you're not going to dig that up by accident. This stuff is so strong, you're going to feel it with the bucket. And plus, usually whenever I'm on a site, I always ask the homeowner, where's the electric, where's the well line, where's the septic, any propane lines, any electric going to buildings or anything. Um, usually they, they'll know, and you can usually look too. You know, even if they say there's nothing there, 
and you think there might be something, like, have them tell you, like, okay, well, where's the well? Or where's the septic? And if they say they don't know, it might be where you're digging. Or if you see any 1,000-gallon propane tanks out in, the, out in the yard somewhere, and it's between the building and what you're digging, chances are there's a line there. You can usually see on, on the building sometimes. There'll be a, a conduit or something sticking up out of the ground. Here's a good example of how to under identify an underground utility line. So you see a conduit going in the ground here. Obviously it's going somewhere. This one's pretty easy. There's a transformer pad right there. So there's definitely a line going straight from, from the building to that transformer. And then and then there'll be obviously lines from usually from that transformer to a telephone pole somewhere. So you gotta look for that. Especially when you see a utility like that that's dangerous to dig up. You know, you wouldn't want to dig up that primary electric service that's feeding that box. That's high voltage. Another good tip is to know all your codes when it comes to these buried utilities. Here, for that primary electric service going into that box, they wanted that down four feet. Underground water lines, the code in this area is four feet so they don't freeze. I've seen them a lot less than four feet, even in some cases, maybe just over one foot, and, and the people claim they don't freeze, but I always put these in as deep as possible. Usually what happens is you'll dig and hit bedrock around here. Um, you know, and if you hit bedrock at almost three feet, you know, you're, that's usually fine. But if, if you're hitting bedrock in a few inches, then you got to hammer or it's a frustrating job. Um, the two inch conduit, communication and electric lines, code in this area is usually two feet for that. There isn't usually a real strict code on the depth of septic stuff. Um, and it usually doesn't need it because it doesn't, you, I've never seen a septic freeze unless, the only time a septic will freeze, sometimes you'll get, if it's installed wrong and there'd be, like say this pipe will have a, a bow to it, especially this pipe. You'll see this pipe sometimes and it'll be buried and it'll have a, a big bow in it. And if it's not that deep and there's like a, a you know, a, a thing of water, it's constantly, it's constantly sitting in it because the pipe is bent, that will freeze. So you got to make sure these lines are pitched properly. From the house to the tank, I always do this. This is supposed to be quarter inch per foot. And I'll usually put the tank as close as possible to the house because it's a lot easier to level up 10 or 20 feet of pipe getting it quarter inch per foot because that's real important instead of doing a hundred feet or something I think that demonstrates my point pretty well. Why saving money costs money. So whenever you're putting in any buried utility lines, buy the best one you can. That would be very frustrating if this or this was your septic pipe. This one here, and, and that was nothing. I've, I've driven over to test this in the past. Actually, here, tell you what, let's, let's make this break. I want to see what it takes to break this. buried when you got material on all every side of it 
it's a, it's a lot stronger than when you're just putting pressure this is a hard ground and something hard on, on the top it only shattered when I hit it with the, the very point of the tooth but you know good question is this this is schedule 40 is there schedule 80 for this stuff I've never even asked but it might it probably exists I mean everything else is either 40 or 80 so 